Okay, good morning again, church. We have an amazing guest speaker today. Uh, we are, I'm just so honored. Okay, so very, very honored. We have an amazing couple in front of us, with us this morning. And this couple needs no introduction, of course. The founders of Shepherd Center Foundation, Pastor Jacob and Pastor Bridget, are here today. And so, um, I just want you all to really, you know, give, give them a really great warm welcome as Pastor Jacob comes up to share an inspiring, I'm sure, an encouraging message to all of us. Yes, let's give them a hand. Oh yeah. Good good morning church. How are you? Praise the Lord. Say what? Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Shall we pray? Father, this morning, we are so privileged that we can be found in your house, O Lord, among your good people, to celebrate your victory for us. We pray, O God, this awesome Sunday will be a meaningful one for us. As we speak your word, as we digest it in our heart, Father, manifest in our life, O Jesus. We celebrate you in Jesus' name. We ask and we pray. I have one or two stories to tell. And today we want to look at Matthew chapter 18 verse 11. Matthew chapter 18 verse 11. If you have your Bible, please turn to Matthew chapter 18 verse 11. And somebody can read it for me. Can somebody yeah, read it? Uh, okay. So verse 11, For the Son of the Man has come to save that which was lost. For the Son of Man has come to save the lost. Amen. God has sent His only begotten Son so that we who are lost can be found. And we are found here today. That's why we are so grateful to Jesus. I just want to begin this morning with a small story, perhaps you might have heard it. There's a blind girl who hated life, who hates everyone except a boyfriend whom she loved. A boyfriend really cared for her, do everything for her, helped her all the way out. So she said to her boyfriend one day, if only I can see, I will marry you. As days passed by, somebody donated a pair of eyes for her. And now she can see. She could see joy came into her life and the boyfriend asked her, since you can see, will you marry me now? And she was shocked to see her boyfriend also was blind. And she refused to marry the boyfriend. The boyfriend was very hurt and later wrote a letter, a note, Please take care of my eyes, dear. You see, many times we complain when our status changes. We complain and we begin to complain. We never appreciate what God has done for us. We want to invest in God's kingdom. That's why God has assigned us, has chosen us. Our status has been changed so that the kingdom of God can be enlarged. Amen. Many years ago, when I came to meet Pastor Joe, that was 20 years, 18 years back, I do not know, never had a conversation with him, but I came before him and asking him for a covering for Shepherd Center. A home call for the destitute and orphan children, which Bridget and I planted two years ahead. 
that was in 1993. 1993, November 22nd, we started this work. And today, 20 years have passed by. Hallelujah. Never we became poor. God has made us millionaires. Amen. How come is it possible? Because somebody have to invest. Somebody have to take a challenge that this ministry is a meaningful ministry. When everyone turns away, everyone turned down and my eyesight is going blur. Uncertainty has come into our life. We are looking for a church to stand by with us, to share our burden, to invest in what, to trust in what we do. This man lay his hand on the main road in Clang and he prayed for my eyes. And go ahead, Jacob, don't worry. And today, until today, we are faithful to the church that have burdened to share and planted this work. And today we have more than 400 children who have gone by and we still have another 85 that we are managing. Perhaps if the church can put up the slides, uh, just take about five minutes, just see what's happened in the past and present. Let's see. Light soft. Can off the light. Very interesting, right? Some of the fish fisheries and chicken poultries. These are children's stuff. Children love all animals and we invest in their life and God multiply it. So we have no lack of nutrition, full of protein food. 
and everything is more possible because somebody has trusted, somebody has burden to set up. There was one boy was sent to us from Kappa, six of them in a family, and this widow, the Indian family was sent to us, very hyperactive children. Children never went to school. We have no idea what was their background and how the children will be in our life. We took them. Two days later, we observed the children. Somebody called me and said, uh, look at the boys outside. They are going to toilet on the street, on the road. And we have to transform these children. We have to take them. We have to educate them. We have to tell them this is the way our life has to be. And out of that six, one God chose him. And I was invited to Saramban to a church to, to share a morning worship service. And after the service, suddenly somebody fall on my knee, on my leg and say, Pastor, how are you? Uh, he called me, how dad, how are you? I was shocked to see this young man suddenly said, I am the pastor of this so-and-so church. And this is the boy who went to a toilet on the street. You see how transformed when somebody has planted a seed in the life of children. Every investment we do in God's kingdom, let it come from our heart. We do it joyfully, we do it willingly, we do it sacrificially. So when we do that manner, everything will be ours. You want to get a good seed because you want to have a healthy plant. You want to invest in that good seed so that you can plant and later you can harvest a plenty full of ours. And when you harvest plentiful, everyone wants to enjoy the fruit of your labor. So that is what God won and kingdom of God has sent Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, to save the lost. And we are lost. Today we are found. We are healthy. You see the blind girl, the, the boyfriend have donated his eyes so that she can see and she can marry him. Status changes. But Paul, we remember in the book of Philemon, verse 11. Somebody can read Philemon, verse 11. Many times we love our children, our, our beloved ones, and we say they are useless. We condemn them with our word. The word proceed from our mouth, bring life and death. And the, the, the labor or the fruits of your word, you're going to eat it up. So what you confess from your mouth, bring life and death. So be careful of what we say, and how we say, to whom we say. If you look at your own son, or own daughter, useless. What we say? Useless. Say useless. You shouldn't say useless. We give what God has given to us and we condemn, we spell a bad word to them and we say, useless, use for nothing. This is Paul is telling to Philemon, he was not profitable. Many times people say you are not profitable, it's not worth investing in your life, in your ministry, in your work. We gain nothing in investing in God's kingdom, especially for the orphan and the destitute. They are not going to pay back. There is no tithes coming back. There is no investment going to come. We are going to give ourselves and gain nothing. They are not our children. Why must we care? Praise the Lord. When God has given us a children, we must care for them. And we bless over them. We spell good name. We pray over them with blessing. 
We pray over them that they are the handsomest. We pray over them that they are the beautiful one. We pray over them that they are the intelligent one. We confess positive words. Whatever words that you can find in the Bible that bring life, you pray over them. One day, the word that you have invested for 20, 30 years will bear fruit. Hallelujah. This is what Jesus wants you to do it today. Take a challenge. Your investment never go waste. Nobody will know what you're going to do. But you are investing in God's kingdom on earth. Somebody can read Philemon, verse 11. Who once was unprofitable to you, but now is profitable to you Amen. and to me. Paul is telling to Philemon, the slave was not profitable to you, but is profitable to us now. Anonymous was a slave, a runaway man from his master. Philemon might be a wealthy, rich man at the time, but slavery was there. He could be a master of many slavery. Maybe he's a trader. But Philemon was founded by Paul. Paul's ministry in Colossus Church, Philemon accepted Jesus. Now Paul met Anonymous, the runaway slave, maybe in the prison together with him. And he reached out to this slavery man who was run away, who have destroyed something perhaps. And he is wanted, he is, uh, is wanted by on a, a filament. But Paul reached out to him. Now Paul daringly writing a letter to filament to accept him back. Pardon him as Christ has pardoned us. He is our brother. He's no more a slave, but he's a brother in Christ. It was very difficult for us to forgive our past. Unless you forgive, then you see the fruit. Unless you forgive, then you see the blessing of God come into your life. Many of us never want to forgive. The sky is there, man. How can I forgive? But... It is eating you up silently. Unforgiveness is eating you up. Corrupting you silently without you knowing it. Hallelujah. That's why God is so graceful and merciful to us. He wants us to come to him back. Church, let us look to Jesus Christ. Always thanking him. We saw some bicycles there. Perhaps I've shared the last time. My daughter and a few boys from our home came to me one day and said, Dad, there's an Indian boy in school who walks three kilometers. Who walks three kilometers to, from school to school. He walks every morning and every afternoon. He walks back. Let me have a drink, please. Thank you. This is how I shout at children. <laughs> so you know, my hair never grows. <laughs> but I'm always forgiving. End of the day, I give them a hug. Praise the Lord. That is what fathers are for. Always forgiving. So this boy, they came and told me a pathetic story. Children use psychology on parents. That... There's a boy who walks and comes. He's dark as you. But he always, early morning, 7 o'clock, he'll be sweating. And he will rub like that. He will rub like this. Without him knowing, his shirt will be, his scars will be here. There'll be marks. So what do you want me to do? Please buy him a bicycle. I say, cannot. Since all of you are caring for him, you all share your pocket money and come up with the amount. And the later I will put some money to buy the bicycle. Really? Yes. So they came up with 75 ringgit. Within a week. So excited. Dad go and get a bicycle. So I went to a bicycle shop, got him a nice bicycle. 
never ask the bicycle man this is for the orphan we never say we never ask for discount we just pay we don't want to reveal ourselves that we are orphan because god has made us rich amen you know you always want to have a pathetic when we go to market please give me sayo sayo you know i i'm i represent the orphanage home so give us sayo sayo he says sure i give you discount and he all give a unwanted one to us we don't want that so we change the course god has give us plenty so we can spend we want the best for the best children we want to give them the best because they are god's children today they are often the children walk into our life they are called often and destitute they are mocked they are teased but when they come into our life we say you are without parent you are without mother without auntie and uncle now look here you have come to our orphanage home as you enter the boundary of shepherd center as you walk into our house you are no more called often but you are clo- you are called blessed say blessed you are called blessed because we are your parent your status change from often and you have a parent now and these are your siblings they come from various part of this country and they are called your siblings and your staffs are uncle and aunties and we want to be your parent and we give them the best the status change so the boy came they brought the boy to the house the small yeah, from four boy came to the house they give them food and quietly we we put the bicycle at the back of the van and we drove him back to his house the father and mother dashed out because so many other uniform children came out from the van they say what happened to my son then i approached the father i said your son is a good boy these are my children from the shepherd center foundation and we wanted to bless you a bicycle for your son and we want to hand over to the father so that he will give permission to the son to go to school and the joy of the father and mother with tears they are only rubber tapers we prayed we came back home when i come back home this evening there were complaints from my children bapa kita tak ada bicycle orang lain dapat bicycle we cannot have bicycle but others can have bicycle this is what we always mama we always grumble in our life we complain about our spouse we complain about our children we complain about our spouse but remember there are so many lives there out there never had companion we complain about our children remember out of many marriages they don't have a fruit in their life but we have children remember when we complain about food there are nobody there are many people out there without food we complain about our house is too small but are there are people without home they have become homeless but thank god for what we have in our life and continue to praise the lord always so when these children complain about the bicycle i said to them you ask our father your father my father and everybody's father you stand here group yourself together and ask god to provide for you because i am just a caretaker for you i am me and my wife just a caretaker we are just a foster parent to you unless god give to you i can bless you believe me church <clears throat> exciting came up suddenly after two weeks there was a lorry from shah alam looking for this address and they came to our place they are taking out bicycles one bicycle two bicycles three bicycles four bicycles five bicycles six bicycles 20 bicycles 25 bicycles with full of gear mountain bicycles 
as young as three, as old as twenty can use the bicycles. For next one month, the boys were terrorizing the whole taman. <coughs> they were enjoying. And then they said one day they put up a flag at the back of the bicycle. Two people carrying flag. One is in front, one is at the back. That we are going, uh, what we call it. They have flags and they are going to the waterfall cycling. 14, 15 kilometers. You know, my heart beat very hard. And after that, they enjoy the bicycle. Then we also got a workshop where the boys can fix themselves. And then suddenly I see the small tire come into a big bike. They are modifying the bicycle. Later I found everyone is getting hurt. One will come out. You just about eat 9 o'clock. One fellow will come break your hand. Another fellow will come, they let go because they see the girls around there, all the pretty girls, they let go their hands and they go and they fall. So, as a father, I have to take protective measure. I have to take regroup all the bicycles and I say, you all have enjoyed the bicycle for the past three to six months. Now I'm going to send it away to somebody else. And we took every bicycle and we gave it to another organization in Ipo. Now no more accidents. Sometimes we have to take care of what God has blessed us. So Paul invested in this man, a slave man, and Philemon forgave him and accepted him to the church and later theologian and 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 an historian say this anonymous became a bishop. Hallelujah. What a forgiving heart. What an investment. A silent investment brought joy to the nation and to the city. One boy was referred to me. A dark person, a stout boy from Shah Alam. He has no father and mother. Many times people cheat us. They bring all the rascal character to us and they put up a pathetic story saying that this boy need help. And they brought him to us and he said openly I was a gangster before. He wanted to show off himself. I'm a gangster, I use parang and all that. Previously, just one week ahead, somebody has given me a samurai sword. One pair of samurai sword, really. They don't want the samurai sword, so they give me. And I took the samurai sword and put it under my table. And this boy walked in. I, you know, the way he carried out. A, a, a young boy, 14, 15 years old boy. And he said, oh, I was a gangster, this and that. Uh, I don't know whether I like to stay here or not. Then I look at him, I stare at him. Did you been to prison? No. Did you caught up by police? No. And then I, I, I bent down and took my two samurai sword and I put up on that. You think what, you are taiko, I better taiko than you man. I took up the samurai sword, I was a gangster before. And I put it back slowly. Our friend got shaken up. After many years, he come from different church. We sent him to Montford. He graduated from Montford. He became a good boy. A lot of character reformation. We have to trim him every now and then. It's painful. It is hurt. When somebody corrects us, it is hurt. But we trim him. We sent him to Montford. We invested in him. And he graduated, he went to work, later God has called him, he went to Bible school, he graduated, for two, three years we supported him every month unconditionally, just a little bit, 600 ringgit every month, Bridget and I supported him, no question asked, we never asked him to come and testify in our church, we never told him to come and preach in our church. We never put a condition in his life, but let him go. And he was serving another church. And 
he became a pastor. He became a pastor in Ipoh. And if God's will, tomorrow he's coming back to Shepherd Center to serve in our church. Hallelujah. You see, we do not know what God can transfer and transpire. Many times, this is what we do. So take a challenge in your life. Invest in, in God's kingdom. But remember, folk, remember the word in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. Let us be reminded of ourselves what the word of God is saying in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 22 and 20, sorry, 23 and 24. Can somebody read it for us? Though it is written, it is screened out, but it's nothing like reading it and digesting it and be reminded in our mind before I close. Okay. Thank you for every effort that you take to make the kingdom of God enlarge. Don't think so. You are a small people. Don't say impossible things. Every time we say impossible, say impossible. 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 Say impossible. impossible. I am possible. You change the word in impossible. The spelling impossible is a possible word and you say it. I am possible. Hallelujah. So you see, impossible can be you are possible. You say, I am possible. Hallelujah. Can we read this word? Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. Let us all stand. Can somebody read? Thus say the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. 24. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands who knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in this I delight, says the Lord. Amen. Let us not glory in ourselves, not to glory in our own intelligence, not to glory in our riches, in our mind, in our own wisdom, but let us glorify ourselves in the Lord. Let us celebrate him tonight, this morning. Thank you very much for having me and my wife. I enjoyed for a moment. Be blessed. God bless you for the opportunity given. Thank you.